Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com and welcome to the video study guide for Macbeth by William Shakespeare. The play Macbeth is fundamentally weird. It opens with three witches standing around chanting. Are they making predictions or casting spells? Are they just predicting the future or are they making it happen? Viewers in Shakespeare's time didn't know and neither does the character Macbeth. He's been fighting for Scotland in a huge battle when suddenly he and his friend Banquo encounter the witches. They predict that Macbeth will first become Thane of Cawdor and then King. A Thane is a noble title, like a baron. The witches also predict that Banquo won't ever be king, but his sons will. When the two rejoin the normal world of men, they find that the former Thane of Cawdor has been executed for treachery and that Macbeth has been granted the title for being so brave and loyal on the battlefield. Hmm, brave and loyal. That's what he had been, the great warrior and golden boy, happy to serve Duncan, King of Scotland. Happy, that is, until he stumbled onto these witches. Once the first prophecy comes true, Macbeth and his wife start scheming, conniving, lying, tricking, misleading, and killing to make sure Macbeth wears the crown. He kills all his friends and fellow warriors, as well as the king he'd sworn to serve. Every act he takes, makes it seem like his dream is coming true, only to come back and bite him in the soul. He fights until the very end, but Macbeth never does understand what anything means, and he dies as brave and confused as any dumb jock in a teen slasher flick. Now, if that makes the play sound trivial, what saves it and what has made it last so long is the picture of naked ambition Shakespeare gives us. It's like he's asking, what if you had a chance at a dream you couldn't admit you really wanted? What would you do to get it? 